Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. We are honored that you are here today as we look at what to do if your financial aid appeal is denied. Aye, if you appealed for more financial aid but your appeal is denied, you do still have a few options. Let's dive right in, shall we? We shall. All right, so did you file a real financial aid appeal? (laughs) I know that might sound like a weird question, but first, confirm that you actually filed a proper appeal based on documented special circumstances that may affect your ability to pay for college. If your appeal was just a request for more money without any justification, no wonder that you were denied. Bluff and bluster will not get you a better deal. Boilerplate appeals don't work either. Your child may be a wonderful person with great grades, but they won't, that's not going to get you more need-based financial aid. You need to understand how to file a proper appeal. The special circumstances that are most likely to lead to a successful appeal involve job loss and pay cuts, not home-baked chocolate chip cookies. Although, if you do have them, You can send them my way, right? Okay, anyway, meet with the financial aid administrator. Next, ask the college financial aid administrator for the reasons why your appeal was denied. What can you do differently next time? What are the next steps? Ask about other options for paying for college. They will help you. They want you to go to their school. (laughs) So you can appeal again, but only with information about a new special circumstance that may justify an adjustment. The new appeal letter should highlight what has changed since the previous appeal letter. Tell the financial aid administrator that if there are special circumstances that weren't mentioned as part of your original financial aid appeal. Defer enrollment for a year. This could be helpful. You can actually defer this enrollment for a year. It's a good option if it will lead to a more generous financial aid package, of course. A new year means a new application for financial aid. The base year will change which may cause the financial aid let offer to change, especially if your income changed. That's a huge reason for getting approved for more aid. However, if the student uses the gap year to earn money to pay for college, (laughs) the increase in income may actually lead to less financial aid. But, you know, there's a trade-off there. You can actually pay for it, so there's that. You can also enroll in a less expensive college. You do have options here. Instead of deferring enrollment, Consider enrolling at a more affordable school. If you applied to a mix of colleges, you might have been accepted by a less expensive school. An in-state public college may be a less expensive option. A community college is another low-cost option, and you can get those stinking prerequisites out of the way. If you applied only to expensive schools, you might be out of luck, although there are several hundred colleges that accept late applications for admission. There are also colleges with rolling admission. Don't count on returning to the original college after a year or two in a less expensive college. If you take classes in a community college during the gap year, you will be considered to be a transfer student after that deferment ends. And many colleges provide less financial aid to transfer students. So if you're already in school, but the financial aid package for a subsequent year is inadequate, consider transferring to a less expensive college. About half of colleges practice front-loading of grants, where the grants are more generous during the first year, yielding a lower net price than in years later. If you didn't apply for financial aid as a first-year student because the college has a need-sensitive admissions policy, figuring that, you know, you can kind of wing it for a year, (laughs) you might be ineligible for institutional grants from the college in subsequent years. Please keep that in mind. Colleges don't like it when families try to game the system. You can imagine why. So they may waive this policy only if you can demonstrate a big change in your family's financial circumstances. A couple hundred or even a thousand bucks isn't going to cut it. Look for more money elsewhere. There are several sources, by the way, of additional money that can help you pay for school. Search for scholarships using free scholarship matching services, like fastweb.com and the College Board's Big Future. 
Also, see if academic departments offer their own scholarships. You might be able to get free tuition by serving as a resident assistant in the dorm or serving as president in the student government. There are also ROTC scholarships and other military student aid. Ask about tuition installment plans, which break up the college bills into equal monthly payments over the course of an academic term or year. This is a good option if you can afford to pay for college, just not in one big lump sum. Cut your spending. Live like a student while you're in school, so you don't need to live like a student after you graduate. So develop a minimum budget to reduce college costs. Buy used textbooks, sell your textbooks back to the bookstore at the end of the term, or better yet, to other students. The bookstore is only going to give you pennies. <laughs> use the textbooks on reserve in the library, or ask the professor if they have a copy you can use. By the way, we have tons of tips on this very subject about textbooks. It's in the podcast archives. Look for it and you'll find it. Really, really cool and useful tips. Also, get a roommate or live at home with your parents to save on housing costs. Get rid of your car to save on fuel, maintenance, and parking costs. Bikes are really awesome. Some colleges provide free bus passes, too. Also, don't eat out or participate in paid entertainment. Unless someone else is paying, of course. Borrow federal student loans. Okay. If you have no choice but to borrow to pay for college, the annual loan limit for dependent students varies by year in school, from $5,500 to $7,500. Independent students can borrow $95 to $12,500. If that's not enough, you might need to consider private or parent loans. The Parent PLUS loan has an annual limit equal to the cost of attendance minus other aid. But if you need to borrow private or parent loans, there's a risk that you may borrow more than you can afford to repay. Total student loan debt at graduation should be less than your annual income. Get a part-time job, but student income will reduce financial aid in subsequent years. Also, students who work a full-time job are half as likely to graduate with a bachelor's degree within six years, as compared with students who work 12 hours or less per week. If your need for more financial aid is due to an unforeseen emergency, ask the college if it has an emergency aid program. The college may also have a food pantry or a program where students can donate leftover meal plan points to other students. Sign up for financial counseling with a nonprofit credit counselor. Sometimes financial challenges can be caused by money management issues. Go figure. A financial counselor is going to teach you how to manage your money instead of having your money manage you. They can help you develop a financial plan which will free up cash to help pay for college. Let's take a look at some tips on how to avoid this problem in the first place. Too often, students apply only to selective colleges and are kind of surprised when the net price is more expensive than they can afford. The net price subtracts grants from the cost of attendance. It's the amount you'll have to pay from savings, income, and loans. So when crafting your college list, Use each college's net price calculator to get a personalized estimate of the college's net price. Apply to a mix of schools, including a financial aid safety school, which is a college you can afford to attend even if you get no financial aid. Often, an in-state public college will be your least expensive option. Apply to colleges that rely on the FAFSA for institutional aid, not just colleges that use the CSS profile. Here's how to handle denial of other types of financial aid appeals. Satisfactory academic progress. A student can actually lose eligibility for need-based financial aid by failing to maintain satisfactory academic progress, SAP. Students must maintain at least a 2.0 GPA on a 4.0 scale and be taking and passing enough classes to be on track to graduate within 150% of the maximum time frame, which would be six years for a four-year degree. You can lose financial aid eligibility due to poor academic performance. You can appeal the loss of financial aid when the failure to maintain SAP is due to extenuating circumstances, such as death of a relative, severe injury, or illness of the student, domestic violence, unusual financial circumstances, like a student or parent job loss, death of a parent, those types of things, or other special circumstances as determined by the college. Independent third-party documentation of the special circumstances may be required or the appeal will be denied. If your appeal was denied, 
you can appeal again if you've addressed the issues that caused you to fail to maintain SAP. Federal plus loan denial. This can happen. A borrower may be denied a federal plus loan if they have an adverse credit history. So an adverse credit history involves a current delinquency of 90 or more days on $2,085 or more debt. Debts totaling $2,085 or more in collections are charged off. Or certain derogatory events in the last five years. This is bankruptcy, discharge, foreclosure, repossession, tax lien, default determination, wage garnishment. If the only reason for the PLUS loan denial is due to a current delinquency, you can regain eligibility just by bringing the delinquent account current. As soon as this shows up on a report, a credit report rather, you'll be eligible for that PLUS loan. If one parent is denied a PLUS loan because of an adverse credit history, have the other parent apply if they don't have an adverse credit history. You can also appeal based on extenuating circumstances, such as not being responsible for repaying the debt due to divorce, the debt was paid in full, the debt was discharged in bankruptcy like Chapter 13 only, the debt was rehabilitated, or you have made satisfactory arrangements to actually repay that debt, or the credit report contains some errors that led to the adverse credit history finding. You can qualify for a PLUS loan if you get an endorser too, which is kind of like a co-signer who doesn't have an adverse credit history. The endorser cannot be the student. And finally, if a parent is denied a Parent PLUS loan, the student becomes eligible for the higher loan limits available to independent students, which could be very helpful as well. And that is our show for today. I know that was a kind of like fire hose, drinking from a fire hose a little bit there. Boom, boom, boom. Lots of information. If you want to dive deeper, check this article out at thecollegeinvestor.com. Also, follow us all over social media. If you have questions and concerns, please message us. Just search for The College Investor and you'll find us. Thanks so much for stopping by today, and we'll talk to you again real soon.